Ever wonder how you can use data from the internet for your business? Maybe you want an edge to find great deals or a better way to evaluate potential tenants. Well, you're in the right place. My name is Ariel Herrera, and I'm going to show you how to do web scraping for real estate data. So stay tuned. Hey everyone, today we're going to go over how to do web scraping. I'm going to walk you through an example of web scraping for my home state, New Jersey's data. By the end of this, you'll know what web scraping is, what possibilities exist, and what tools you can use to apply it. I'm going to have this video split in two. One is going to be at a high level, which is what we're doing now, and the second is going to be for those Python geeks like me going into a technical deep dive. So as you see here, I have the state of New Jersey. For those of you who aren't familiar with New Jersey as well, some counties that may stick out are Atlantic, where Atlantic City is, and Hudson County that's close to New York. So what comes to your mind when you think of New Jersey? You might think of Six Flags Great Adventure, of crazy rides like came the Ka, or Jersey Shore, or maybe you're thinking of the crazy traffic on the Garden State Parkway. Well, did you know that New Jersey has incredible real estate as well? So the overview of what we're going to do is imagine we are long distance real estate investors looking to invest in the state of New Jersey. Now, our problem is because we don't live in New Jersey, we do have limited resources. We can't rely on word of mouth from our neighbors or other locals in order to find great deals. So our goal is to use big data technologies to actually get data about the local towns that we're in, uh, interested in. And we want to get this information in an easy to read format, such as a CSV file that we can pull up in Excel. So our solution is that we're going to use web scraping to build out a data set of New Jersey towns, information that we could use to identify trends and areas for opportunity. So what is web scraping? Web scraping is a tool that automatically collects new or updated data, which is really awesome. So here's just an example of a news site. On the left-hand side is the text of the article, and on the right-hand side is the actual HTML, where the text is. As you can see, it says MTA is resurfacing, a transit service, and this is how you can actually extract text from a website. So the benefits here is you collect data from market research, you can extract contact information, such as for potential clients, and you can also track prices across multiple markets. So web scraping has a lot of different utilities that can be used. So I'm only going to be showing you the output of the code, and again, I will have a technical deep dive in a later episode. So let's imagine that we want to get information on New Jersey State. One of the things that I wanted was just a simple Excel spreadsheet that had all the counties and all of the um, cities inside of them, which apparently was not as easy as I thought to get. So I said to myself, okay, if I can find a website that has it, I could just scrape that data. Well, right now I'm on New Jersey State Library. It's an org site, so I can pretty much trust it. And it has municipalities by county in New Jersey. And I want to see this like in an Excel form. So what I can do is if I highlight Atlantic, which is one of the counties, and right click, then hit inspect, I can actually see the entire HTML structure, which is across any website that you go on. I'm using Chrome, but you can also do this in other browsers. There is parts within an HTML file that describes different characteristics of the web page. So in this case, it identifies that this table that has all the information of the municipalities um, has a name called OMSC custom table. So what I'm doing is back here, I'm pulling that custom name, I'm extracting the web contact, pulling that table, and then getting all the data here. But you see it's not really in a readable format. So what I do next is that I parse this to actually get it in what we call a dictionary format, which is a one, it could be one to many mapping, meaning that we have one county here, Atlantic, and we have many cities underneath but still not the format that I want. So I, next step that I do is I put it into this list format where I have the county and then the city next to each other. And then lastly, I put this into an actual table form 
So let's imagine that we have this information now. We're sifting through the counties and the cities and something has caught our attention. We are interested in Middlesex County and the city is East Brunswick. So I'll just show you what that looks like. That is right here, right in the middle of New Jersey, which I consider Central Jersey. Some people say it doesn't exist, but those people do not know the truth. So we're interested in investing right in the circle. We have the name of the county and the city, but is that going to give us any, any real tangible data to use for investment decisions? No. So what we can do is actually look on the news on a local website. So I'm pulling this website up now. It's called The Patch. And per New Jersey County and city, they actually have information related to real estate. And as you can see, they have things like open houses. But more importantly, look at this title. First look at dramatic new Route 18 development in East Brunswick. The main point here is that Route 18 is a major road that runs across East Brunswick. And the fact that they're doing development on it could mean that there's going to be um, more people moving into the town, more possibilities of growth. We continue down and we see East Brunswick Plan's massive development project along Route 18 again, and then Sayreville, which is a neighboring town, massive luxury apartment complex, Riverton may be coming. So we're seeing a lot of development in central Jersey that is planning to be coming in the near future. But do I really want to be able or have the responsibility to go on these websites every day to find this information? No, that's a waste of time. So what we can do is automatically extract this content for us without having to do the manual work. So I'm extracting the website contents and very similarly, if I were to highlight this title, if I wanted this information, I can go right click, inspect, see that HTML contents. And I see here that they label the titles. So five new open houses, they have a class that labels it near black link. Don't know what that means, but that's the way to grab the information. So I'm doing that back here and I'm able to quickly get all the titles that come up on that page. I just limit it to the first 10 since those are probably the most recent. And as you can see on the second one, we have that text come through. First look at dramatic Route 18 development in East Brunswick. Awesome. Titles are great, but it's even better to have some more text to really understand the concept of what this blog is about. So what I'm doing down here is I'm actually getting the descriptions per each of those blog titles. So on here, it's a little bit more information. It says, on Tuesday, East Brunswick released never before seen renderings of the dramatic and somewhat controversial Route 18 redevelopment plan. So I go down and I create this, what we call, I'll say a table, but we call in a data science world, a data frame. And I have the blogs, I've labeled them by numbers, the titles, the description, and the city that they align with. Now it's important to have the city part because now I can actually join it or bring it together with the original data that we had, that county and city data, which I do down here in the cell. So now I have the county, I have the city, I have all the blogs, the titles, and the descriptions. Now we have data to work with about a local town without even residing in this town. So what do we have so far? We have two data sets that are merged into one file. This can be used to find trends per city. And we have what we call features in data science, but we could just say columns. So how do we make this a process? Everything that we do, we want it to be as simulated as possible. That way we can focus on things that matter. So it'd be really good if we could actually have someone label for us what's important news and what's not important news. For example, down here, one of the blog posts says most expensive home on the market in East Brunswick. This is not really that much re that relevant to us. We want to see new developments, um, potential luxury apartments coming. These are the things that we care about. So what we could do is we can actually label which ones we find important. So if we find it important, let's say we're going to give it a label as one. And if it's not important to us, we don't really care about that news. Let's give it a label as zero. Now, how do we automate this? So there's two ways. One, we can hire someone to manually label each new blog entry. Each time our web crawler pulls out data of the latest titles and descriptions, we can have someone label important or not. 
Now the issue is here is that it's not scalable. Right now we're just looking at East Brunswick, New Jersey. Now imagine if we want to look across a hundred different cities. This is going to be really hard for someone to do manually. Uh, it's going to cost a lot of money to train someone, and it's also going to have the possibility of mislabeling. If someone puts not important, but it actually was important. This could really hurt us by maybe skipping out on a city that we wanted to know more about. So what we can do, which I think is more efficient, is we develop a machine learning model that auto tags the important and non-important label per blog entry. Our web crawler pulls in information. Our AI model then says if it's important or not, and we are only emailed alerts when the data is labeled important. It's scalable, it's low cost, and it's low error. So how do we train a model to hand label what's important and what's not? Now I'm not going to go into some crazy technical detail, but at a high level you'll be able to understand. For one thing we want to do first is being able to use NLP to extract text, being able to cluster similar titles. This means our blog titles. So using AI, we can cluster similar blog titles together and then quickly label if they're important or not. That way we can build this data set in order to train a model. And still trying to keep it high level, um, but the overall process, just so that you understand, is we already did this. We collected the raw data, we processed it, we cleaned it, we explored a little bit of it. And the next step would be to actually start putting it into a model. And then based on the model outputs, you would visualize what went on and decide, okay, model's doing well, it's not, how do we make this better? And at the end, you actually have a product that you can use, your own little AI web crawler, um, automated project that can help you with your investments. You're probably thinking, actually, is there an easier way to get this data? Do I really have to do web crawling and scraping? Now there is, which is awesome. So there's this thing called APIs, their application programming interfaces. What this means is imagine I just went on this site, the patch. So sometimes these websites get a lot of requests, a lot of heavy requests, which could actually slow down their site. So what they do in turn is that they offer this data to you in an easy to read format, such as these tables that I had showed you previously. Now when they do that, it's awesome because someone like me, a techie, I'll be able to just to grab that data in a raw form that's easy to process rather than having to get that HTML. Unfortunately, not all websites do this, which is why web scraping is still a thing. And what if you're not that technical, but you still want to utilize web scraping? Well, there's actually websites out there such as Import.io where you can do this, but it does come at a price. This is an example where there's a website that has prices for roller skates. How could this be relevant? Let's say, for example, you're selling rollerblades online on Amazon and you want to see the competition where they're pricing their roller, roller blades in order to make yours prices adjusted. So you want to scrape those competitors' websites. And what you do with this is, as a user, you would highlight what you want to extract, and then you would get that output back in a table form, which you could then save to, to CSV. So I haven't used Import.io before, but I know it's available. It does come at a, pro a price. Uh, so just think carefully before you want to do that. So we did a pretty simple thing which was bringing in information on counties and cities and then some news data. We could also get permit data too from municipality websites which would be awesome. So for example if we want to keep track of the development of that Route 18 project we can set a web crawler to actually look for permits to see if this is actually following through or if it's just all talk. And we could also look at local forums such as a Facebook local community. I'm part of the Manalpa, New Jersey residents group. And as of recently, there was initiative to have some new housing units, including affordable units in the area. Now, as an investor, you might think, oh, this is great, development, awesome. But if you take a closer look, there were a lot of comments. And if you look at the emotion behind it, right at the bottom, it was pretty negative. A lot of people weren't happy about it in the town. So this may intrigue you to understand why, but being able to have this information readily available at your fingertips without even living in the area is so huge and it's a big reason why long distance real estate investing can work. So I hope you enjoyed this video and be sure to subscribe.
Thanks, guys.